Welcome to Pretty Chance. Uh, today we're going to make a very quick, easy um, nesting area for species like Polyrachis uh, using the items that you'll see flashing up for you. Uh, natural bamboo, uh, we've got sealant, sponge and uh, simple tools, kitchen knife and clamps will be required. Um, very simple, uh, we now sell the packs of these which are various pieces of bamboo which are various thicknesses and widths. Uh, we do mixed packs. Uh, they can be glued into formicariums as they are or they can be sliced in half with a kitchen knife. Obviously take care when doing that uh, but they do split fairly easily. Uh, here's one I did earlier. Sound like Valerie Singleton. There is um, there's a bit of a knack to doing it. Obviously line up the uh, the knife on the on the end and just make sure that it's central to the actual um, bamboo and then uh, just whack it with a bit of a, a hammer or something similar to that. Uh, this is my first attempt at doing this so uh, fairly simple. Drilled a hole um, for a bit of tubing in the back there. Uh, the bamboo is very good because it's naturally segmented so it will give you the kind of chambers um, I've used um, polystyrene on this one that I'm making now, uh, but we do sell the sponge, so that if you wanted to do a um, uh, one for a species that requires a high moisture content, then you could just add sponge and just add a little hold to the top, so that you can obviously stick a syringe and just hydrate that area. Uh, but the polyrachis will be fine in here. So there's not really much to be said about this. I've drilled two holes, as you can see. Um, fairly large holes. From memory, I think they were about... Um, I can't even remember. I think about 8mm, 9mm. So here's the um, sponge that I've got. I've just cut that up. It's been very approximate, so there were some gaps around that, but I wasn't too worried because I can use the sealant, which is that stuff there. I've had this tube for months, use it on various little projects, playing around, um, and just apply it to the outer edge of the bamboo. Um, I've obviously already sampled uh, that bit of sponge in there, and I did have a few gaps. So you'll see that when I'm applying this to the end, I'm applying it thicker towards the bottom just to fill in any gaps, um, because the ants will obviously chew their way out and find their own way in and out otherwise. I'm sure there's other things you could use rather than the, the sponge or the um, polystyrene that I'm using there. Um, if you're handy with a saw, you could saw a bit of plywood up, a bit of marine plywood, and use that on the ends. Uh, the other thing that you can do with these half sections is uh, glue along the front um, and actually stick them to the inside of tanks. Uh, so that the tank when it, it will, in a sense, become the screen. Um, so I'll just plonk that in there. We sell the screens in uh, various thicknesses, um, same length, so we go from um, two centimeter upwards. There we are. I'm just <coughs> excuse me, smoothed that over with my fingers. And now we're doing the other end. Not very exciting. The screens are uh, four millimeter thick, um, and you'll see those on the website. The uh, the sealant uh, we'll be adding to the accessories page, uh, along with the sponges. So you could certainly make quite a few of these and join them all up, um, and it'd be very cost effective. So plonk that in there. <coughs> You can see off to the left I've got one that's drying, uh, that's my kind of test one. Um, you'll see that I got a bit carried away with the uh, the um, silicon there, so it's showing on the inside of the bamboo. Not that that's a real problem to be honest, certainly not going anywhere. I 
think I should have speeded this bit up before doing the voiceovers on this. This might be a good time to uh, put the kettle on. So here's one of our screens. This has got the uh, protective film on it. Just scrape that off. Ta-da! Again, if you were um, gluing this to the inside of a fish tank, then you wouldn't really need that screen. You just glue it direct onto the tank. Uh, and if I turn it up, you'll see here there's a gap. So when I apply the beading uh, along the seam, I will apply it thicker in the middle. And I may have to come back at a later date and just uh, apply another layer. It's usually best when working with silicon just to do small amounts. Let it dry and then come back and add more. Otherwise, before you know it, it's stuck all over you, the screen, the bamboo, in your hair. So, here we are. This is it dry now. So this is uh, cured for 24 hours or just dried basically. You can see where I've put a quite a big thick layer when I initially sealed the, the sponge or the foam in there. I think for a first attempt, I don't think that's too bad. Obviously with practice, uh, you'd get that beading uh, a little tidier. You can see there's a small gap there where the knot is, where I haven't um, put enough sealant in there, but I'll just add a little bit more. Uh, now it's dry. And on that end as well, even though it doesn't need any. So I'm going to whack a bit of tubing in that and we're going to put that in um, a polyrachis um, enclosure. I just need to buy the tank. I've got the ants. Um, I've used the tubing in the back which acts as a stand but there's nothing to stop you gluing something on the back to keep it um, upright or in different uh, positions should you want. But uh, not bad for potentially under a fiver. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, like the page and uh, let us know your comments. Uh, if you've got any ideas of uh, cheap, affordable, homemade formicariums, um, drop a message down below. Thanks very much.